Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Easter. Okay, I guess you can all hear me, right? Hello. Oh, okay, so uh, according to the divine principle, what is the purpose of life? Joy, that's right. Happiness, right? Happiness, happiness. Um, here we go. So Easter is about the resurrection, right? So hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is the tree of life. So um, according to the divine principle, there is a, you know, there is, there is a, there is a mind and there is a body, right? There is there is spirit and there is substance. And for whatever curious reason, when something exists in the spirit or in, in the mind, right, uh, the substantiation of that is is the creation of joy. Right? The desire fulfilled, desire fulfilled, substantiated in the physical world is the tree of life, is happiness, right? Um, I kind of find that really curious. Did, was that God's plan? Did God create that? Did God create? Did God create the whole concept of something being in your mind, and then once you make it happen, you feel happiness? Or did that exist? Does that just happen? Anyhow, that's just an aside. I just wonder about things like that. Um, now, <clears throat> if the purpose of life is happiness. And in a sense, happiness exists through love. Then in a way, the purpose of everything that exists on this earth is for the purpose of love. I mean, air, the trees, the ground, the frogs, your hands, everything exists for one purpose, and that is for the purpose of love. Now, that's like, I find that to be a really interesting concept because I think often often we are sidetracked right sidetracked I have to get a job I have to do this I have to do we we are often our focus often is based on um, reality right reality and we have to deal with reality and we we don't think of of love as being the primary purpose for everything that we do for our existence now, Reverend Moon, he, he sometimes would say things that I found really, really curious. For example, one time he said that he was having a really, really terrible time in prison, and it was raining, and um, so he was trying to be grateful because everything was going so poorly that he decided to be grateful that his nose was not upside down. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a very interesting concept. Like. Thank you, God, that my nose isn't upside down because or else rain would be falling into my nose. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's really stretching it. Like, you have to be pretty sad having a pretty bad day to have to think of that, right, as the reason to be grateful. But at the same time, it's like, well, that's really interesting to think that, that everything in our physical body was created with so much thought and for this purpose of beauty and for this purpose of love like everything in the human body in a way is created for love right we can see like i mean in order to exist you don't really need to see we don't really need to feel right but or for example like animals are covered in fur right they're covered in fur but somehow human beings we are not right we have this skin and in a way, it's for us to be able to feel, to feel each other, right? To touch each other, right? So our existence, everything about us was created for love. Everything, you know? Why do we have hair on our heads? Except for some people. <laughs> right? I mean, we could all just be bald, but we somehow have hair and it's different colors and we can style it and we like wearing clothes and we like wearing different kinds of clothes and have different things like why why all of this all of these things are created for the purpose of love <clears throat> now hope deferred makes the heart sick but desire fulfilled is the tree of life so who 
of all the creatures that have ever existed was the one that had the greatest hope. Jesus. Jesus. And before Jesus, who came before Jesus? God. God. So God had this hope, right? This tremendous <laughs> idea in his mind, right? This tremendous, like, I want this beautiful thing, right? I want this fantastic thing. And in a way, right, the greater your hope is, the more potential you are, have to be disappointed when it doesn't happen, right? So the question is, sometimes you wonder, like, well, you know, you dream of, like, for example, a simple thing, like, I dream of taking my kids to the beach and having a really nice day at the beach. So, you know, we have to get this and we have to get that and go to the beach, you know, We're like, let's go. And then the day arrives and they're like, oh, I want to wake up and, oh, or we have a flat tire or whatever. So, you know, sometimes the more excited you are about something, the more hopeful, the more, the more you look forward to something, the more danger there is of, of it not living up to your expectation, right? So the question is, well, then should I give up hope, right? Should we just, you know, you know what? Actually, in order not to be disappointed, I'm not going to be excited, right? I'm not going to have a dream, right? So <clears throat> in a way, that's, that's a solution, right, for disappointment. Solution for disappointment is not to hope, right? But who, who didn't take that path? Let's go back to, to, your, to your guy. Yeah, Jesus, right? So Jesus was able to take God's hope, right? Which was such a great, such a great vision, such a great hope. And be like, I'm not going to give up on this hope, right? I'm not going to toss it aside. For us, I mean, just the, just, I mean, imagine if God came to you and said, excuse me, I would like you to take upon my great hope and expectation and build the kingdom of heaven on this earth. You know, that is such a humongous, that's such a great hope, right? So most of us would be like, we know that there's a great potential for disappointment. There's a great potential that we will not live up to that expectation. So we, in a way, we choose not to hope, right? We choose, we're like, you know what? I don't think I can take that. But Jesus took that upon himself, right? He took it upon himself to take God's hope and be like, I'm going to try to fulfill your hope, your great hope, Heavenly Father. But as we know, he wasn't able to fully substantiate that hope, right? That great hope, right, became such a great, a great and profound disappointment through the crucifixion, right? Through the crucifixion, he, Jesus was not able to fulfill that hope that God had entrusted upon him. And as we know, that was a, a, a tragic and terrible moment, right? of absolute disappointment. But interestingly enough, right, we have Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday is a day where actually pretty much everything went wrong. Everything went wrong Friday. Friday, Jesus was not able to substantiate God's hope on this earth. But somehow or another, Jesus was able to be victorious beyond failure. Right? Beyond the fact that he was not able to fulfill that substantiation of God's hope, he still was able to be victorious. So, where does that victory lie? Does that victory lie in the fact that he actually didn't die? No, he was actually crucified, right? He actually, the, the victory of Jesus was the victory of not giving up hope that victory of never giving up. So that original hope that God had given to him, even though everything went wrong, so many things went wrong along the way, so many little things went wrong, and he went to the spirit world, he still didn't give up that hope. <clears throat> so in a sense, like hope, holding on to hope, is victory, is a victory. So yesterday, um, yesterday I went to this thing called a 
matching blessing ser uh, it was a workshop for people who are looking to be to be matched and blessed uh, so um, there were there were people that came and gave some testimonies of their experience trying to find a spouse and um, it was very interesting because uh, of all the things that you know, they were, you know, they were, they gave a lot of advice. But the one advice that sort of stuck to me the most was the advice was never give up, never give up. Like no matter how many times things don't go your way, no matter how many times you fail, that's not a reason to give up, right? So even though the substantial, this our subst the substantiation of the dream of being for a young person to find their beautiful spouse there's problems going through that right where this person lied or this person broke my heart or I didn't like this person or whatever so there was testimonies from some couples that it took them six to seven years to try to, to find a spouse, you know, and these are young, beautiful people, and uh, they shared about, you know, sometimes they spent, you know, a year talking to a person, and then everything kind of would just fall apart, and I know people who basically, at that point, were like, you know what, it didn't work out, it's not for me, you know, I give up, <laughs> but, those, but there are people who don't give up, you know, they don't give up. And eventually, they found somebody. They found their spouse. And it's like such, it's such a beautiful testimony. It's a beautiful testimony of the victory of our hearts, the victory of our hearts. And I think that that applies to all of us. You know, it's it's even even within a relationship, within a relationship with another person, things can still be really difficult. It's not like oh well, I found my person and everything's fine now, right? So the question is, can we maintain a victorious heart regardless of our circumstances? <clears throat> and I think that's, that's, that's really like, that's the resurrection. The resurrection is, is the victory of the heart in any circumstance, right? Regardless of our external circumstances. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. So, so basically, the victory over death, right? Jesus' victory wasn't just a victory over circumstances. Actually, he was victorious over death, right? He was victorious. He was victorious over love. And in a way, right, death, death, in a way, sometimes is easier than love, right? Because actually, first comes love, then comes life, right? So, being victorious over love can be actually even more difficult than being victorious over death, right? Overcoming death, overcoming the, the breaking of the heart, right? The breaking of our hearts is, 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 is such a challenging thing. But God doesn't, God doesn't, doesn't stop. Like, God doesn't stop, you know? And God, and God continues to love each one of us as if, I, I mean, according to the divine principle, one of, each one of us has the potential to have the value of the entire cosmos, right? Each one of us is like a universe in, of ourselves. Each one of us is Adam, and each one of us is Eve, right? And in a way, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing, right, to think that according to the divine principle, there was only one Adam and Eve, right? There weren't three couples, you know, okay, let's see who does it, you know, whoever, whoever makes it happen, you're the one, right, there's only Adam and Eve, there, there, only, there was only one woman and one man, and everything was on those two people, and in a way, it kind of showed, it, to me, to me, what that shows to me is God's absolute faithfulness in me, right, as me, as, as, as a person, like, I'm not interchangeable, you are not interchangeable. There, it's not like, oh, well, you know, Eve, you failed. We'll just get the other Eve, you know. She's actually prettier. <laughs> See, there's, there was only one Eve. There was only one. 
right? In a way, we hear the story of Reverend Moon when he was um, leaving North Korea. He had one disciple with him, right? And according to the stories, this disciple had a broken leg, and he carried this disciple, and the disciple was like, just leave me, you know, leave me here. You know, I, I have a broken leg, I'm just a problem for you, like, go on without me. But Reverend Moon was like, no, because you represent everything. You represent all humanity. You are, it doesn't matter that you're weighing me down. You mean everything to me. And I feel like in a way, right, we are everything. Each one of us is everything to God, right? Each one of us is everything. And each one of us, you know, God hopes in us the way he hoped for Eve, the way he hoped for Adam. And God doesn't ever give up on that. So we have to try not to give up on it either. But I think that from the point of view of, you know, just the whole idea of, of the value of love and how we can, we, you know, to tr that we may try to seek that in our lives, you know, that we may try to really find, you know, the lo love from God, love for ourselves, love for our spouses, love for our children, love for creation, right? There's so many aspects of love. It's not, it's not one. It's not just one thing, you know. And one of the other things that one of the ladies said, which I thought was, was really beautiful, she said that she, you know, she spent like six or seven years looking, trying to find a spouse, and there was many problems along the way. And she said that during that time, what she did was she focused on really expanding her relationships with other friends, with other um, elder members of the church. Um, she, she would do things to help all the younger kids in our church. So the love isn't, love is, can, love can grow, right? Love isn't one thing. And the more love we have in our life, the more stability we have, right? Because emotionally we are dependent on love. So we can grow. If, if things aren't working here, you know, if things are difficult in certain relationships, then we should try to um, grow other aspects of our life and maybe then eventually that will bleed into our family life or whatever you know our hobbies our job our friends our co-workers etc etc I pray now okay. uh, <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father uh, Jesus mm, Heavenly Father, you were the person, or the God, I guess, who had that tremendous hope for the substantiation of happiness and love in this physical world, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, and we want to actually really thank you for, for never giving up on that hope and being, in a way, the trailblazer of love, the trailblazer, the example for us to follow. Heavenly Father, we pray that you can really deeply guide our hearts to, to understand what, what, your, what that means, what it means to actually, you know, experience happiness and to actually love <coughs> ourselves, to love you, to love other people, Heavenly Father. We really sincerely ask you for your guidance, um, regardless of you know whatever challenge that that comes with. Because Jesus had to face death in order to experience life in a way. So we just pray that we can we can accept the challenges that come our way, so that we can actually experience love. Thank you, and we pray in the name of I pray in the name of Catherine Wright as a blessed central family. Uh,